let's work on our previous knowledge. This previous knowledge of this particular topic is uh, what I called a Lewis structure. But here I have a Lewis symbol of an element. When you're talking about Lewis symbol of an element, it consists of an element symbol and surrounding dot to represent the, norm, the valence electron. To represent the number of what valence electron. Therefore, if I'm picking sodium and I want to represent sodium in a shell, we call it electron configuration. What I need to know here is mass number of sodium is 23, while the atomic number of sodium, which is the numbers of proton in the nucleus of an atom of an element, is 11, and this is equivalent to electrons is equivalent to what electrons why the n the numbers of neutron is 12 then by the time you add them together will give you 23 now at this center you have 11 p and we have 12 n n stands for neutron here then this is a shell the first here is taking two electrons. Why the second share is taking eight, as we know, the maximum number of electrons for the second share is eight. Why the other one is taking one? Because here you have to just share 11 electrons. If you add two plus eight, you have 10. Then 10 plus one, you have uh, what we call 11. Now, the, the last shell is what we call outermost shell or we call it a valence shell and the electron on that outermost shell is one and this electron is what we call a valence electron then inside inside the the shell we have other shells we have two year eight year making ten all together what we call them innermost shell then we have what we call inner electron. Therefore, in this particular case, we'll be having 10 inner electrons and one valence electron. Meanwhile, in the course of this uh, class, you will be needing, you are going to need, you are going to need valence electron. Note that we are going to need valence electron. Now, good. I'm showing here what you are seeing here. The man is trying to rehearse magnesium together with what? Oxygen. Oxygen gas. And uh, we need to know the reaction is violent. That's why you are seeing a white powder, what magnesium mosaic flame trying to come in out from the what? From the glass jar. In this case, two things are important in this particular case. The first one is. There is a release of energy. Then the second one is there is a what? A new chemical bonds are formed. Now, you need to understand that when you have magnesium, you combine it with oxygen, gas, then automatically it's going to form NGO. No, there will be a breaking of bond between the what? Oxygen atoms break, then then they will rearrange again combination of these atoms combination of these particular atoms to form what we call magnesium oxide in that case what happened a new chemical bonds are formed and that what is happening here therefore that will take us to our topic topic is going to be chemical bonds good then here we'll be talking about the behavioral objective Meaning, at the end of this particular class, you should be able to list, you should be able to explain types of chemical bonds, electrovalent or ionic bond, explain covalent bond, explain coordinate or dative bond, explain metallic bond, state conditions for formation of ionic bond, then explain the factors governing the formation of ionic bond, then you should be able to list the characteristics of electrovalent bonds. You should be able to list and explain the characteristics of covalent bond. 
list types of weak bonds, explain hydrogen bond, then explain Van der Waal force, then define intermolecular forces, then you should be able to list and explain types of intermolecular forces. Good. Now, when you look at this particular man, you are seeing here, this particular man, his name, his name was Linus, Linus Pauling. Linus Pauling was a student like you, studied chemistry, and he studied chemistry very, very hard to win a Nobel World Prize in what? In... 1954 for his work on chemical bonding and aside it also received a Nobel Prize call it a Nobel World Peace Prize in, in 1962 for his campaign against nuclear toxin. This is telling us now that as a student you need to work hard so that your work can be recognized. And aside this, you have to advocate as well. You have to advocate for what? Good uh, environment. What, what do I mean by good environment? You need to be good to people around you. You need to ensure that your environment is safe with what we do, that you don't affect the environment negatively, you don't affect people negatively. Because if you do that, it's going to affect a lot of people. And when you are doing this, what we are doing, you are advocating for what? Peace education. And it's very, very good for us as we are working hard. We should be thinking about what we can do to make our environment safe. Now, let's go to the business. Chemical bonds. But we are talking about the types of chemical bonds. There are two. We have the weak bonds. We have the strong bonds. But what is chemical Bond. When you're talking about chemical bond, we're talking about what at the attractive force between atoms when they combine chemically. You know, when you're talking about atom, you are talking about oxygen atom plus another oxygen atom, and this will give us O2. Yes, the two atoms combine chemically as a result of what we call attractive force. And that leads to what we call a chemical bond. And this 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 bond here that we have here, this bond that we have here, they are of two types. We have what we call the strong one bonds and the weak uh, bonds. Now, when we are talking about strong bonds, we are talking about electrovalence is an example of strong bonds. We are talking about covalence is an example of strong bonds. We are talking about coordinate covalent. Uh, and uh, metallic bond. These are examples of strong bonds. We are going to be taking them one by one. The first one we'll be talking about here is ionic or electrovalent bond. Now, basically, when we're talking about electrovalent or ionic bond, it's defined as the electrostatic force of attraction between, you have to understand this, a positively charged ions. First off, it involves what? Transfer of electron, that is very, very important. Valence electron from one atom called the donor atom, especially metal, to another acceptor. This non metal. And these electrons reside in the atom which are the what atoms. You need to know where do they stay? They reside in the what valence electron. And when you're talking about valence electron, we're talking about electron in the atom shell. Therefore, when you have A, A means it has one valence electron in the atom motion. Why the B means it has several electrons in the atom motion? What happened? The A we transfer is what? Is one valence electron to what? To B. Because B need eight valence electrons for that particular shell to become complete. And what happened? Because A is giving out its electron, it becomes plus this is what we call a positive charge ions it won't because it won't, you won't call it atom again it has become what we call ions but this ion is positive charge ion and because b is receiving this donor is donating his own electron because b is receiving electron and how many electrons is he receiving it's receiving one electron that's why he has to carry negative one and it becomes a negatively charged 
ions. Now that is what we call possibly we call it oppositely charged ions. For this electrovalent bond to, to occur, the two atoms must be what oppositely charged ions. Now you have plus and you have what minus. They cannot combine together, and that is what is happening here. They cannot combine together to form what we call ionic bond, and that is what we have here. That's what we have here. And another example that I, I prepare for you is a reaction between sodium and chlorine. And you know when you have sodium, I've told you that the valence electron of sodium is 1. And uh, the valence of electron of uh, chlorine is what? 7. If you do it this way, you have one electron here, you have another one here. You do another one, you have one here, you have one here. You have one here, you have one here, you have another one here. But this one can take eight, I've told you, and uh, you have to share what? You have to share something, then another one here. One here, you have one here, you have uh, one here, you have one here. Good. Now, yeah, this. This outer atmosphere, this is what we call outer atmosphere, and the, the electron in the outer atmosphere is seven. The electrons in the outer atmospheres in the outer atmosphere are seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And therefore, it needed it needs one electron to become complete. What happens? So don't we give the one electron that it needs to chlorine? And then when sodium does that, what happens? Sodium become Possibly, what charge by by losing is losing one electron. That's why we put plus one there. You see, two eight. That's lost one electron to what chlorine and chlorine has accepted the electron. Let's put something like this. Chlorine has accepted the what electron because the chlorine has accepted the electron. What happened? How many electrons is it accepting? Is accepting just one. Therefore, we put what minus what minus one. Now you've have you've achieved what we call oppositely charged ions. The two ions will now combine together to form what we call sodium chloride. And this sodium, this sodium, and this chlorine. Then by the time they combine together, I form sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Well, there are two types. We have the normal table salt, and we have the one we use in the lab. And this kind of reaction, because it involves transferring a what valence electron from metal, sodium is metal, to non-metal, chlorine is non-metal, we call it ionic bond. And uh, you need to understand one thing as well. Look at this, this ionic crystal of what sodium chloride. Although these fit molecules do not exist in the solid form. Of ionic compound, you need to know discrete molecules. They do not exist in the in the solid form of ionic compound. Independent molecules do exist in the vapor form of such compound. What are we saying here? Look at it this way: the bond between the bonds between each of these particular ions are strong ionic what bond, and this this is a three D structure of this particular thing and what happened they are being, this particular structure this particular crystal is being formed by what sodium and what chlorine ions and uh, what bring them the to start for that that uh, bring them together is what we call a strong ionic what bond now, what are the conditions for the formation of ionic bonds? This is very, very important. What are the conditions for the formation of ionic bond? Yeah, for the formation of ionic bonds, there are certain conditions. The first one is the numbers of valence electrons. The atom A, which is the metal, they must possess either one, two, three valence electrons. They must not be, you know, if you have one, you can easily lose one. If you have two, you can easily lose two. If you have three, you can easily lose what three valence electrons. Why the B that is receiving them, you know, the B is called the uh, acceptor. The one that is receiving must just have either five. You know, if it has five, it means it needs three to become what eight. If it, if it has six, it means it need it needs two 
to become eight. If you are seven, it means it means one to become what? Eight. And the, the element of group one, two, three satisfy this particular condition for atoms, while those of five, six, seven satisfy this condition for B. And that is what actually happened here. When you look at magnesium, magnesium has two valence electrons, while the chlorine, the two chlorine, they are having what? Seven and seven. Meaning it's easy for it's easy for magnesium to lose its two valence electrons to what? Chlorine. Why chlorine? It's easier for chlorine to gain one to become eight and uh, to get one to become eight. It has to take one to this and take one to that. What happened? Now, yeah, you'll not, you not be having plus. You'll be having what? Two plus because magnesium is losing two electrons, two valence electrons to what? The first one is what? Chlorine atom and the second one towards chlorine what? Atom. Chlorine here has gained one valence electron from magnesium. Why this one too has gained one valence electron from what magnesium to become you cannot see you now have two eight eight two eight eight then you have two eight they are all fine then they cannot combine together now you know when they combine together they will now form what we call magnesium chloride the kind of bond here we're talking about the condition that is favorable for the formation of this ionic bond. And uh, we all know that the kind of bond that we're going to we'll be seeing here is what we call um, ionic bond. Good. Now, let's go to the next one. Okay, good. The next one now, when you, are, when you have calcium oxide, when you look at calcium oxide, look at calcium oxide, okay? When you look at calcium oxide, the atomic number of calcium is 20, you know, is 20. And the uh, atomic number is 20, which is the numbers of electrons to be shared. You have two, the first one will take two, second one, eight, you see I have what, 10, another one will take two, you see I have two, two. Therefore, oxygen here, you have what, two, six. This is the valence electron here is six, while the valence electron here is what, two. Basically, it will transfer two to this particular what oxygen to become what eight, and it's losing the two. It become it become two plus, and it's receiving the two. It become two minus. You see, then they cannot combine together to form what we call calcium oxide. What we're saying here is the metals must have either one, two, three valence electrons. Why the non-metals must have either to, to accept the electron must be either five, six, or seven. The next one that you need that is very, very important is this what we call net uh, lowering of energy. Basically, you might be thinking, what are we saying here? To form a stable ionic compound, there must be a net lowering of the energy. In other words, the energy must be released as a result of what electron transfer and the formation of ionic compound by the following step. The removal of electron from A require what input of energy this is what we call ionization energy sincerely when you are when you want to when cash want to release the two valence electron yeah you want to release the two valence electron you need what energy and the kind of energy that needs to release these two is what we call ionization energy and to do this the ionization energy must not be too high it means if it is too high it will be it, it should be consuming a lot of what uh, energy and uh, to remove the what the valence electron, but when it is very low, it will be easier for anybody to remove the what the valence electron. And aside this, the one that is receiving, this one that is receiving, for it to have a better power to draw this electron to itself, then it needs the what high electron affinity. You know, when you're talking about electron affinity, we're talking about ability for you to what attract what. To gain electron from the gaseous atom of this particular uh, uh, element. Therefore, here yeah, the electron affinity here yeah, must be very, very high to what? Attract the electron from here yeah, to itself. It must be very, very what? High. Because if it is not very, very high, it will take a very, very long time to what? To draw this electron towards oxygen. In order to form this, and aside this, we talk about electrostatic what attraction. 
we talk about the electrostatic attraction energy which is the electrical word energy it must be very very high as well you know when i talk about electrostatic attraction as they have as they have it now unlike charges what attract each other the, the tendency of attracting each other must be very very high to form what we call ionic compound so that they will not go away and uh, you see if the energy release in in b and c is greater than the energy consuming a the overall process of Electron transfer and the formation of ionic compound results in immense release of what energy. Talking about it is going to be endothermic or exothermic water system energy. Ionization of A will occur and an ionic bond will be formed. For example, the formation of sodium chloride. When you look at it, look at it. This particular this energy you need. To remove this particular what valence electron. Look at this particular thing. This is the energy that this guy needed to attract electron to itself. Now look at this. This is the energy, this is the electrostatic energy that they have when they combine together. Now let's see the net energy release, the net energy release E will now be this particular one plus this particular one. Because this this one is what this one is gaining the energy. This one too is gaining the energy. Why this one is what you are putting this particular one into the system. You know we are putting the energy. You are putting the energy into here. The energy you are putting into here to release your space is this particular one. Why this one you are what is gaining the energy hmm? to take this particular one to become this. Why this one too? You know, when they combine together, the energy that they use to form that particular thing is this. Therefore, what happened? This one is negative because you are taking it. Then this one is positive. This one is positive because you, you know, when you see the attraction, the energy is coming to you. The energy is coming to you. Then you add it together, remove it from the one you are putting into the system. What you have is you become what? It will become positive since the overall process results in a lowering you know, of what energy. Hence, the only bond between these should be formed. The overall process results in lowering you know, of what energy. This energy is positive. Then the overall the overall reaction will be formed. Now let's talk about the 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 third one. The third the third one is what we call. The third one is what we call electronegativity difference of A and B. From the line of argument using two, we can say that the atoms A and B, if they have greatly different electronegativity, only then they will form an ionic bond. If they have what we call what, if they have great what difference what electronegativity. In fact, the difference of what two. Or more is necessary for the formation of what ionic bonding. Now let's take for example now sodium. Sodium electronegativity value of sodium is 0 0.9. Chlorine is what is 3.0. Then the difference between the two is what 2.1. Therefore, basically, basically the kind of bond that we exist between sodium chloride will be what? Ionic bond because the difference is above two. You know, if the difference of two or above two, then that particular compound, we have what we call ionic bond. And this particular thing will equally be explained when we go to, to uh, when we go to periodic table because electronegativity is very, very important when you are determining the polarity of a compound because you need to understand as well that a covalent compound can be polar and can be what no polar not only ionic compounds are polar good now let's talk about the factors that is governing the factor that is governing the formation of what ionic bond talk about the ionization energy which we've talked about before and the energy of a metal atom which loses electron should be low i've told you about this particular one it should be low so that the formation of 
positively charged ion is easier you know if it is low then the energy you are going to put into the system to release the electrons will not be much the lower the ionization energy the greater will be the tendency of the metal atom it will be the tendency of the metal atom of change into what positive hence greater will be the ease of formation of what ionic bond that is why alkaline metals and the alkaline earth metal form bonds easily because you don't need too much water ionization energy to release you don't need too much about ionization energy to release the valence electron good then you talk about electron what affinity then we're talking about electron affinity we told you that the electron affinity must be very very high for it to what draw electron for it to draw electron to itself therefore the higher the electron affinity more is the energy release and stable will be the words anion forms you see it release more energy it release more energy and the stable the, will be the anion form and the element of group six and seven have in general higher electron affinity and have high tendency to form ionic compound and the last one is the lattex what energy talking about electrostatic for like after the formation of cations and the anions you know what happens separately they combine to form ionic Combine in this process the energy is what released energy is released in electron affinity energy is also released in uh, In lattice what energy meaning if I have this if I have this If I have sodium plus Then I have C uh, Minus now what we're saying here is the process the energy is released by the time they combine together to form sodium chloride by the time they combine together to form sodium chloride the energy is what released and this energy that is released is called lattice what energy and it's defined as the amount of energy released when one mole of an ionic compound is formed this is forming one mole of an ionic compound is formed form it cations and the words from the cations and the words anions okay good then under that particular case under the lattice energy it's still talking about the better the the higher the lattice energy the greater the strength of the words ion equals bond and the value of uh, lattice energy depends on the following the size of the ions and when you're talking about the size of the ion in order to have the greater force of attraction between the cation and anions their size should be small as the force of attraction is inversely proportional to the square root of the distance between them therefore the size must be very small i hope you know what we mean by size size must be very very small like if you have a lithium lithium is three then you see you see look at this then if i have uh, beryllium Beryllium is four. Yeah, but this will have uh, this size is smaller. Than uh, Is it smaller than this? Than this? Why? Because in the atomo shell, is having two valence electron. This one is having two valence electron in the atomo shell. Why this one is having one valence what electron? Good. And because we've told you that because it's inversely proportional to this. To the square of the distance between them. Then you talk about the charge on ions. The greater the charge on ions, the greater will be the force of what between them. Therefore, greater will be the strength of the ionic compound. When you're talking about the charge on the ions, the greater the 
charge on the iron. We are talking about this is greater than this as well because this is true. This one, then what will happen? The force of attraction here will be higher than the force of attraction. Here. The force here will be higher than the force of attraction here because here the charge of the ion is true, while here the charge of the ion is one. Now, what are the characteristics of this electrovalent bond? The first one is they have high melting point. I've told you why they have high melting point and boiling point because they have what we call what crystal what lattice. The shape they have what we call a crystal lattice. Yeah, they have what we call a crystal lattice, which make that particular thing to be very, very high. Sorry, let me go back what we call have a what we call a crystal lattice. Okay. Okay, good. Then aside that too, they are good conductor of what? Electricity when in multi or in solution. See, because they can, you see, they can, if you have them in solution, they can easily, like sodium, sodium will form sodium plus and C, uh, minus. When you have this in solution, what happened to them? Now this, then plus H plus, then OH minus. Okay. Now when you have this in solution, because of the available ions, because of the available ions in the solution, to make work, to allow them to have a better what conductivity of what electricity, the ions move around, and in the process of moving, it conducts what electricity. They do not conduct electricity when solid. I've told you they don't conduct electricity when solid, which I'm going to explain because when they are solid, they have what we call a crystal lattice. Yeah, they are what we call what we call again a crystal. They are what we call a crystal lattice, which will not be separated into ions. Therefore, it will not be easily, which will not be separated into what smaller ions. In that particular case, it should be very very hard for anybody. For, for it to conduct electricity because the the ions will not be what mobile the, the energy needed to separate them is relatively high after do it's going to be very relatively high because you know they are being combined together by what we call electrostatic force they are hard and brittle what do you mean by hard and brittle the crystals of ionic substances are hard and they're brittle their hardness is due to the strong electrostatic force which will Ion in its what allotted position. I've told you because of this particular what electrostatic force that all the particular make it to be very, 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 very what add and they call it what bridge to. And uh, this illustration, look at you. This is the crystal nature. This is the crystal nature where plus minor plus minor. But then you armor them, what happened? They've been separated. You see. This electrical watch repulsion cause what the cleavage they are not being released, the electrons they are not being released. What happened because they see electron being being joined together. Yeah, you know, this electron has not been separated, they are not separated, they are still joined together. In this particular case, it will not allow it to what to conduct electricity. Therefore, in in crystal in the solid state they don't conduct electricity. They can only conduct electricity when you put them in water. Because by the time you put them in water, they get separated into different components. Then let's talk about their soluble in water. Talk about their solubility in water. You say they are soluble in water. When a crystal of ionic water substance is placed in water, the polar water molecules detach this, form the word crystal lattice by the electrostatic water pool. This ion then surrounded the water molecules and can lead an independent what, existence 
and dust dissolved in water. But you need to know the same reason why it is not possible for non-polar solvent like benzene to be soluble in water because benzene and hexane they are non-polar molecules. By the time you put them in water, there won't be way of detaching the plus and minus. They don't even have plus and minus. They only have they are not polar, which means they don't even have plus, they don't even have minus. Therefore, there is no how you can what, detach the ion they don't have. And in such case, there is no means of conducting what or becoming soluble in water. You know, when you look in this particular solution, <clears throat> when you have a sodium chloride crystal in water, the sodium ion will be attracted by water. As you can see, the electrical was attraction here. Why the oxygen and water get attracted? So sodium flows in the water, and uh, that of uh, chlorine ion in the water gets attracted with the with the hydrogen with the hydrogen with the hydrogen ion in the water. <clears throat> And when happened, what happened? The water salvage the sodium plus, and the water also salvage the chlorine ion, and making the sodium chloride crystal become soluble. Water. Now, going to the next one we call equivalent bonds. So, this word, but we just pick what we need there. Now, when you're talking about it, we're talking about bonds that form between what? two atoms two atoms donate equal numbers of what electrons and share the donated electrons they share it yes to attain what we call a stable octet electronic configuration in covalent bond the electrons are shared between atoms of the same or different elements such that each atom contributes the shared electron so as to attain what we call a stable noble electronic configuration. During the process, discrete or the separate molecules are formed with covalent bonds between the atoms. If electrons are shared between the similar atoms, the donated electrons are equally what shared with shared, which give rise to a non-polar covalent bonds like this particular one, non-polar covalent bond, because they're having the same atom that are sharing their valence electron. But if shared pair of electron involve different elements with different electronegativity, this is very, very important. The electrons are then not equally shared. No, the electrons are not equally shared. Such is called a polar covalent bond. We are going to see example of such. Oh, okay, let me go back and explain what we mean here, yeah, you know, if you have hydrogen atom here, yeah, you have another hydrogen atom here, yeah. you know, this half one, this one has one valence electrons. When you look at it, what happened to them? They are going to share the electrons like this equally. They are going to share the electrons like this. This one too will come, share its own electron like this. This hydrogen. Then this is another word, hydrogen. Then when they do this, what happen? They form what we call H2. This one, they are no polar covalent, no polar what covalent what bond. Why do you call them no polar covalent what? Because the same atoms of that particular element are sharing their valence electron to become stable. But if different atoms are involved in sharing electrons to become stable, then such with difference in electronegativity, difference in what electronegativity, then such compound, we call it a polar because we'll be having plus and minus uh, bond. An example is this, when I have hydrogen and I have fluorine, you know, this has one, this one has seven valence electron. One, two, three, four, okay, five, six, 
seven. Then this one is sharing the electron to what? It's sharing the two ele it's sharing the electron to what? Fluorine. Fluorine is the one taking it. This one becomes H plus. Oh, sharing the electron to it. They are sharing because they want the both of them must be equal. Okay. Sharing is own. Then you have something like this. One, two, three, okay. Look at this, this flowing. Somebody will have asked me that. He should have transferred his own electron to this. If he transfer, there's no how this one can become complete. It will become empty. And you cannot have what an empty shell. Therefore, we need to transfer. Now it has shared the electrons. We need to share the electrons with fluorine. It has shared the electron. The electron here is now one, two for hydrogen. And for fluorine, it has become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is the octet electronic configuration for fluorine and duplet electronic configuration for what? Hydrogen. In such, you won't call this particular one ionic bond because it's not ionic bond because it's not what transferring electrons, it's only sharing electrons. We call it covalent bond, but because you are having different what atoms, atom from hydrogen and atom from fluorine involving in the sharing of what electrons, we now call it a polar covalent bond with with the electronegativity what different being I like hydrogen. I think hydrogen is zero point. Then fluorine is three point five. Fluorine is three point five. By the time this for the hydrogen. Why this one by for the fluorine? By the time you remove them, what you have, you'll be having something like 2.5 uh, electronegativity or different, which is very, very high, making covalent to be what a polar compound. Now we go to the condition two. Now this is what is happening here, the sharing electron toward this, so that both of them can be what stable. This one becomes one, two for A, one, two for what B and to form what we call a covalent bond. Now, the first condition is the number of valence electron. Each of the atoms A and B should have six, five, six, seven valence electrons so that both achieve the stable octet by sharing two, one, three electron pair. H has one electron in the valence shell and attain what duplet, duplet electronic configuration while others attain what we call octet electronic configuration. And this is what is happening here. You see hydrogen, hydrogen, you have one valence electron of this one is one, valence of electron is this one. They have to share, both are sharing. See, they share together to form what we call a duplet electronic what, configuration. And the kind of bond here is what we call covalent bond. It's likewise here, you have seven here, you have what, seven here, they have to share. Because if you transfer, it will not be complete. They have to share to become what? Now, when they share, this one become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then this one become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, they, not, in order to obtain what we call octet electronic configuration. Now, the another one we talk about is equal electronegativity. You know, we are talking about the condition. Talking about the condition, I've told you the first condition is. I've told you what this for. They have to share uh, the atom between them when I talk about the number of valence electrons to be able to share. Mm? And aside the number of valence electrons that are able to share, I'm talking about now, talking about equal electronegativity. You see, if the electronegativity is equal, like sodium, oh, sorry, like hydrogen, and you have hydrogen, what happened? This, let's say, this 1.0. This 1.0. By the time you minus it, you have one minus one. You are going to get what zero. Therefore, must have equal. If both have equal, what electronegative? Hence, electron sharing will take place. Yeah, we need to what share electrons for them to become. For them to have what we call a covalent bond. And what are we saying? When the electronegativity difference is below 0 0.5 downward, we call such 
a covalent when the electronegativity difference is less than if it is less than 0 0.5 0 0.5 this one we call this one non polar this one is called non polar covalent bond but when it is higher than when it is higher than 2.0 2.0 upward we have it as what a polar covalent bond and aside this i'm even thinking now, okay, in this particular case now, if ionization energy is very, very high, then it will not allow transferring of electron. That is another point. Ionization energy, yeah, must be very, very high. To fulfill this particular condition must be very high. Is it only that the electron affinity must be very, very, electron what? Affinity must be very very low these are very important for you to have because if it is very very low it will not be able to what attract electron rather want to share and if the ionization energy is very very high then it will not want to release this electron it will equally want to what share but in case of uh, ionic this must be low while this must be high then in terms of electronegativity, we told you that the difference, the, they must have a greater electronegativity was different for you to have ionic covalent bonds. But in this particular case, I'm having, for me to have it, uh, this one was 0 0.5, less than for me to have non-polar, and they are both can be 0 point, let me say 8 to what, plus greater than or equals, oh, okay, let me say, oh, uh, yeah, it should be, let me see 0.5. Sorry, let me see this 0.5 above for me to have what we call a polar, for me to have what we call a polar covalent, uh, a polar covalent uh, bond. Good. Equal sharing of electron. I've told you about the equal sharing of electron and equal affinity. Let's also that they can attract bonding. Electron pair equally, mm -hmm. they are the electronegativity difference must nearly equal. If it does that, then they have no, they have for non polar, they have no choice than to what share electron. Thus, no equal sharing of electron will form non polar, mm -hmm. no polar covalent bond. Of course, precisely, equal sharing of electron will not ordinarily occur except when atoms a and b are atoms of the same element for for no two elements have exactly the same electron affinity good then this try to you know when you have water when you have one one water molecule one water molecule you know what happened you see this one this one this need it needs two electron. Therefore, we take we need to share one because if we take one from here, this will become empty. If we take one from here, it will become empty. What happened? To rather share one with this and share one with this. And what is happening here? Sharing the electrons. Sharing the electrons, they are what we call this one is on pair, on shared electron pair. Okay, on shared electron pair. Likewise, carbon dioxide. When you look at this carbon dioxide. The oxygen is six, the carbon is four, the oxygen was six. And they have to look for a way of sharing such a way that both of them will become, we obtain their octet electronic configuration, which is very, very important. And see the way you share it. Carbon is sharing two to this oxygen, carbon is sharing two to this particular oxygen. And when you count the valence electron that surround oxygen, you'll be having eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then the one that surround carbon you'll be having eight one two three four five six seven eight and the one that surround oxygen will be having eight one two three four five six seven eight Listen, this kind of what bond is what we we'll call a covalent bond now what are the characteristics automatically even you need to know that their nature you normally see them as gas they are gaseous in nature you only see them as they are gaseous in nature Oh, see, gas. Let me see that. Gases. EG. 
gas or gases. You have hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, uh -huh. they have low melting and low boiling point because uh, you don't even have what we call electrostatic force between them. No, no, no. Uh, the electrostatic force between them is what? It's loosely packed. The particles are loosely packed. Therefore, the electrostatic force between them is negligible. You cannot even see it. Very small. The energy required for separation to is what? Very, very low. Because these atoms, these gaseous atoms are not what closely packed. They are what loosely packed. Therefore, you need what lesser what energy to even separate them. They don't conduct electricity. You are in solid or in molten state or in what in solution because what they cannot form ions. And when they can form ions, there is no way they can conduct electricity. They have a strong and easily what notable what smell of like ammonia our normal urine contains ammonia and then you can feel the smell they are not easily soluble in water to do why they are not soluble in water because they don't even have what a a polar nature where you are positive or negative ions and that is the only thing that can make them soluble in water but they are usually soluble in organic solvents because organic solvent is a what a non-polar water solvent, and they too they are what non-polar. It's easier for them to become soluble in organic solvent. Okay, now the next one we want to talk about here is what we call coordinate or dative word, but it involves sharing of uh, sharing of electrons as in the normal covalent bonding one, but the shared pair is donated by only one of the participating atoms only one does the sharing of what electrons therefore in this case of ammonia you see this one either was two and then what happened to this one so this one has two this one is complete well as well this one is complete already but this man is not complete and it cannot transfer electron and then uh, here, what we what we do is it will decide to share the electron with what to B, but it's sharing it, but B is not sharing in return. It's not both of them. Both of them are not involved. It's only one. It's only D that is sharing the word electron. Therefore, A is the one sharing what electrons to what B is like. Let, let, let me say, is donating a lone pair of what electron to B, so that both of them can be what stable. Look at this now. B is becoming B has become B has become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then A two, one, two. No, and they have become they've uh, they have become what stable. In that case, what we have here is coordinate what compound. Why do you have coordinate compound? Because only one atom. Only one atom is involved in what? In sharing the word electrons. And when they are sharing electrons here, yeah, what is so important is they share a lone pair of what? Electrons. They can share more than, but basically they must share a pair of electrons. It can be two pairs, it can be three pairs, but they must share what? Pair of, they must share what? Pair of electrons. And that is what happened here. By the time you, I hope you know we get this, Fine. In this particular case, what is happening here? I'm, uh, when you have uh, sodium, sodium is seven. Atomic number of sodium is seven. You have it this way. You have it this way. You have this way. You have this way. Then one, two, three, four. Okay, two. Then five. You know, it's like this. Two, five. Therefore, the valence electron is five. One, two, three, four, five. And what happened here? It share one with hydrogen. Oh, sorry, with hydrogen. Hydrogen is one. Yeah, what happened again? It share one with hydrogen because hydrogen is one. Yeah, again, what happened here? It share one with hydrogen. Now. To form this particular bond, this bond you are seeing here, this bond, then this bond you are seeing here. Now, the lone pair of electron here, you see, I have what? Hydrogen atom, this hydrogen, oh, this hydrogen ion, it has nothing, it must be stable. 
what will happen is because this one is having what a lone pair of electron, we decide to what to donate the lone pair of electron to this man that is what free. Therefore, you see, he's donating what uh, uh, by sharing the electron, he's donating the what a lone pair of electron to what this by sharing it to form this particular thing and that what has happened there in this particular case now you'll have you'll be having something like this then here you'll be having hydrogen plus now here you have this then you have this you have uh, this when you count this this one two for this it's stable then this one has one two one two one two then plus this one one two making eight come stable such bond here yeah? this is what we call dative or we call it uh, coordinate bond likewise here yeah, as well likewise water because if you have water is like this we have three hydrogen atom but one is iron. This I have plus here. I have one, one, and one. And I have oxygen. My oxygen is eight. Therefore, if I'm to share this, I have one, one. I don't have any. Okay. This one is like this. I have one in my valence electron is taking one. This one too is taking one. But this one is not taking anything because you now it's carrying one that's lost its electron. Why this one is carrying this one is you know this one is two six. Therefore, the in the valence electron I'll be having six. One, two, I'm only drawing the valence electron. Six. Okay. Okay, let me put six. Good. Therefore, here it will what? Here it will. You know, when it does that, this is what you are going to have. You will have hydrogen with oxygen, and then we have what? Hydrogen, oxygen. Here you have two, two unpaired. On shared electrons, you know, this and this, and the plus hydrogen plus. And what will now happen? It will now take one lone pair of electron towards hydrogen, one lone pair of electron to hydrogen to now form something like this, to form something like this. Plus, then here I have, here I have, see, found something like this. Oh, no, 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 I mean. Yeah, so form that something like that. Yeah, so form something like this. And this can you form something like this. We see have this lone pair here. And this bond is what we have here. Yeah, this bond is what we have here. This bond is what we have here. Therefore, in this particular case, you have one year, you have one year, then you have one year. Then the one, the plus is outside now. They are putting everything in bracket, or you put it this way. Meaning this is equivalent to, or I draw it up, it's equivalent to this hydrogen.
of what you have here. Yes, good. Then, yeah, you can talk about uh, metallic uh, bond. Say the metallic bond, the electrostatic force of attraction between the positive nuclear and the and the sea of mobile electron is called metallic bond. Metallic bond, therefore, is the process whereby the positively charged nuclear of metal atoms are simultaneously attracted to the sea cloud of mobile electrons. The electrons, the metallic bond increases with increasing valence electron of the metal. Therefore, for example, in period three, metallic bond increases from sodium to aluminum. What are we seeing here? What we are seeing here is just like the what is happening there is the center is plus. Everything is plus. Everything is plus. And it's contributing what? It's electron to the word electron cloud. See, and this place is cloud. All this place is cloud. Contributing is what? Elect is electron to the word electron cloud. And what happened? The center become positively charged. Why? The what? The cloud surrounded the word the word the atoms to form what we call a crystal lattice let me say it again the metals contribute is what electron to the electron cloud therefore becoming positively what charged because you have excess what excess uh, positive what electrons so having having excess numbers of protons by becoming what positively charged what now happen it take the electron to the electron cloud electron cloud now use this particular electron that is being given to them by the metals to what to surround the positive charge, you know, unlike charges are trapped, to form what we call a crystal lattice. And what you are seeing here is the electrons. The electron is revolving around the what? The center, because this center, this, the center of this particular atom has already become what we call a positively charged center. In this case, the cloud becomes crystal lattice and on this note we are going to be stopping here for now yes till we meet again therefore i hope you enjoy the class yo i want you to subscribe for more videos so that you can meet us in the next class thank you god bless